So in this particular clip, we're going to be talking about the double spay cast and how we can do that effectively. And it's just as important, obviously, make sure that we're using both our hands to maximise the flexible nature of the rod and also to change position and angle. I mentioned previously how we can turn that rod tip over at speed and how we can do that effective stop right in the last margin of the cast when required. However, I fully appreciate how difficult it is to do and often it is, you see reference made to it only to go ahead and see a completely top-handed technique if I put my hands in front of me and try to make one hand go forward and one hand go back at the same time and what seems such a simple movement becomes a conflict from either side and I would say that that's very similar to getting this movement that we're talking about effectively it has to be practiced it has to be understood and when you do it correctly you'll feel that rod kicking back as the rod tip turns over that is the way that energy is transferred along the line now first of all i'm just going to talk through the movements i tend when i'm on my left hand side or left hand uppermost in the rod i tend to put my hand down here i feel as if that this makes the rod a bit more sensitive and it stops me from that instinct wanting to push it. And really it's not necessary or discourage anyone from holding it too far up anyway. So you hold it where it's comfortable and efficient. Because I'll be casting with my left hand side, I'm going to put my corresponding foot forward to address the target. In this particular instance, we're going to concentrate on just casting across the river with a double spay cast. So we can break this down into three movements. The first movement, we have to get the line upstream. There's various descriptions of this, but my preference is to think about a, a kind of humpback bridge or an arched bridge. Um, the aim is to get that line and move it upstream adequately. We need to make sure we get enough line upstream, especially if we're using a longish spay line like this one. What I want is my anchor to reposition round about this, he this area here. So I'm thinking about that arched position. Now this is an underpowered movement. It's basically just a tease up and then gently downward. I don't want to drop that because ideally what I want is the line to finish on the water surface with as minimal um, slack in it as I can. Or I don't want to dump it in the water for that matter. Now, when I make this initial movement, I also do one other thing, and that is to try and encourage that line outwards. And what I'm trying to make is a kind of arc, so that when I make my, when I make my secondary movement, what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel all the way around as I reposition, pivot the rod up into the casting position. So, the line is basically right underneath the rod tip. If I bring the rod over like this or the line is too close to me, what tends to happen is as I go around, the rod tip will be beyond the line and it will pirouette. And sometimes this can cause it to trap in the water surface. Now, there's a, it's very easy to want to do that and push, especially if it's your weaker side like me. Um, I'm totally right-handed. However, have a think where the rod is in relation to your key position and where it wants to go to and that movement there is all that's required now during this movement it's really important quite often you'll see someone accelerating very soon and what that does the momentum sends the line off that way if I want to conserve the energy right for the end and I want to put it in here because that's where my target's going to be over there I want to put it opposite it's ideal to just start off slowly peel it round and then accelerate up into the D-loop now without too much hesitation I can then use that energy that I've placed that way to make my cast that way and it's much more efficient so over I can then go round smoothly, then accelerate up into the D-loop. It takes a bit of practice, there's obviously a timing issue here, but I would just call it a slight hesitation because the D-loop has to just form and the energy in that D-loop is only there for a small amount of time, so we don't want to wait too long. We want to just make sure that we're leading into the cast at that optimum time. So, one, 
two and the third movement would be that high stop if possible and I say if possible because it isn't easy if I can get my hands just at the right time you can see the speed and energy in the line if however I'm just slightly off it'll still be effective and efficient but it won't just be that it won't just be as good